Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh. Welcome to Portland Media Center Member Highlight. Today my guest is Chelsea Malakara, who's the uh, Sustainability Education Outreach Coordinator for the University of Southern Maine. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so you've got a big event coming up, and it's, what, year seven, I think? Yeah. For the, um, yeah, tell this, us it's going to be, about. yeah, um, so this year, April 20th from 8 to 12, is our annual um, free electronic waste recycling day. It's our seventh year, so you're correct on that. And it's a collaboration between the city of South Port, or the city of Portland the University of Southern Maine North Coast Services, which is the entity that takes all of the electronic waste, and then just some community members. So it's a really great um, experience and uh, event that happens every year. In the last several years, we've actually had the Portland Sea Dogs mascot slugger come and give out free tickets to people oh. to go to the game later that day. And um, so it's just kind of a fun community event, but also really good for the environment for the and environment. for human health. So. Right, and it's an education chance, opportunity, um, to let people know what can be recycled mm -hmm. and what can't be recycled. Exactly. And in this day and age, I mean, in the old days, you had a telephone and you had that telephone for life. You had a TV and you had it for 50 years. Exactly. Now, technology's changing so fast, we end up with all this stuff we don't use and we don't know what to do with. So do you want to talk a little bit about what people can bring on the 20th? Yeah, for sure. So to kind of start off, I'd, I'd love to just give a little background about why we even um, have an electronic waste recycling day and why people can't just throw their um, electronics in the trash. And mm -hmm. that's uh, two parts. So the first part is electronic waste has um, a lot of different toxic substances in it. So lithium, lead, mercury, all things we don't want in the environment and also pose a threat to human health as well. But then we also, but electronic waste also has um, some very valuable materials in it that are environmentally intensive to mine, but also are very valuable to reuse. So there's um, pl high value plastics and metals like copper, silver, and gold. So we take all of that and um, recycle it uh, responsibly and if those were to end up in the landfill they'd pose a risk to human health and have an environmental impact so um, for the electronic waste recycling day we collect things like um, a laptop uh, a cell phone and um, things like VCRs, DVD players, those mm -hmm. old televisions <laughs> that <laughs> some people still have in their basement, <laughs> new televisions um, there's a whole list of things on our website, which I can talk about later. Mm -hmm. But those are kind of the primary things that people bring. But you can also bring things like com computer monitors and keyboards and mice and, and whatnot. Right. But not larger not appliances. Not larger appliances, yep. Right. So things like refrigerators mm -hmm. and ovens, we don't want those. But we also don't want things with refrigerants in them. So that includes right. um, air conditioning units, which are really popular. People are like, oh, I'm getting ready for summer. Right. And then they wonder what to do with it. And um, the... Because of Freon in it? The Freon in yeah. it, yeah. So, um, th but the most common things that people do bring that we don't want are um, batteries mm -hmm. and then uh, any kind of light bulb. Okay. So what do people do with those? So um, two things. So batteries, um, the alkaline batteries, so just your typical battery can actually, according to, if your waste goes to Ecomain, you can actually throw them in the trash to be incinerated because they're not, it's not harmful. Um, I mean, Ecomain has scrubbers to scrub out the, the harm in it, but you don't have to do anything special, but light bulbs should be, um, you can recycle, re-recycle them at Home Depot or bring them to different drop-off locations. Okay. And Ecomain actually has this great app called Recyclopedia that I use a lot personally, but also um, we use a lot at the university to figure out, okay, where do these different, we try to tell our students and our staff and faculty to figure out where things go when they're at home. Yeah, because so. I know with light bulbs, I don't know what to do with them so that I just put them aside and then I'm, I keep reaching for them when I change a light bulb. I'm like, no, that's a bad one. Yeah, no. So now I, now I yeah. can look up where I can take them. Yeah, I was actually looking for those for some samples at home, and I found that um, I still had a whole barrel full of light bulbs <laughs> yeah. that I just haven't gotten rid of. So we don't want those, but there is a, um, if you look up online, the main DEP website, Department mm -hmm. of Environmental Protection, also has a whole list of um, the product stewardship program. So another thing we 
don't want our mercury containing thermostats, oh, yeah. um, which ha actually you can get a $5 rebate for um, returning those. And um, yeah, anything, there, like I said, there's a whole list right. online of, of everything, but those are the most common things that people right. will bring. But people can go and check before they mm -hmm. come in. And that's on the 20th from? Nine, from 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Yeah. Will there be people there helping you unload your car if you have yeah. a lot of stuff? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. So we, it's, it's a very uh, well-oiled machine mm -hmm. seven years later. So you just drive up. You don't even have to get out of your car. And we have folks who come, you tell us what, you know, what the items are that you need removed, if they're in your trunk or your back seat, we'll take them away. And then um, the other really unique and, and something I'm really proud of uh, piece of this event is that we accept donations because we're collecting all these things for free. Mm -hmm. And so we accept donations every year for, for a different organization or charity. And this year, we're collecting donations for the USM Student Emergency Fund. Oh. So it's something that USM set up, the USM Foundation set up to help students who are in emergent situations that might prevent them from continuing school or oh. missing classes mm -hmm. or, you know, unforeseen, um, you know, uh, uh, fees for books or something right. like that so they can apply to this. And so all the donations Beautiful. this year are going to go towards that. And um, last year we raised about $1,400 to go towards uh, cultivating community. So oh, great. I'm excited. And, yeah. and, and so that's a really unique kind of cool piece to this event as well. It's terrific. Now you talk about doing responsible recycling. And you mentioned the name of the, the organization that takes these things to recycle. Tell us a little bit about that. And what they do. I mean, we see pictures of children in dumps in Guatemala mm -hmm. or China or somewhere pulling out the things, and it's very dangerous to do that. So, how do they do this recycling? Yeah, that's a great question. And I don't, I, I'll be honest, I don't know the full process of what happens to everything, but mm -hmm. I would say a large portion of the, I, the items that we collect from this event are. Um, essentially mined, if you will. So mm -hmm. all the metals and, and valuable plastics are taken out. Those are recycled or sold mm -hmm. to places that will make them into something new. And then the, the date hazardous pieces are um, disposed of according to Maine state law. Mm -hmm. So again, something that you could um, find on the Maine DEP website. But is yeah. it a local company that does this? Yeah, North Coast Services. Oh. They're New England based. Great. And they do um, like South Portland's e-waste mm -hmm. recycling event and a lot of other southern and just just general main um, recycling events. Right. So they're very um, reputable. Yeah. I think it's wonderful you do this every year. And you could probably do it more than once a year and, mm -hmm. and still get a load of stuff. Yeah. I'm sure you've talked about that. Yeah, the, the first year that we did this event, so seven years ago, we collected 80,000 pounds of yeah. electronic waste. Now last year we collected 25,000 pounds, but more communities are doing this, so we're getting less, mm -hmm. you know, folks from Buxton or Gorham or Wyndham coming down because they have their mm -hmm. own, um, yeah. their own way. But. Well, and I don't know if you've been watching that TV show with the Japanese woman who's telling you to to cleanse your mm -hmm. home and get rid of things, and that the um, the donations to Goodwill and all that have gone up s like 100%. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that you may get quite a crowd on the 20th of April. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think of that. But we have been, usually in the beginning of March, we already have people emailing and calling us saying, I hope you're doing it again this year. <laughs> I did a big, you know, basement clean out this winter and this spring, and I'm planning, you know, planning to bring things, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know April is when I plan to clean out my basement and my garage, and I know there are things that I can be bringing on the 20th, so. Great. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that we should let our audience know before um, we say Well, like goodbye? I said, if you want more information and a full list of what mm -hmm. we accept, we, um, you can just visit usm.maine.edu slash sustainability, and at the bottom of the page, there's uh, an events section and our event is there. So it has a, a full list and you'll see posters around town. And if you follow the Office of Sustainability on Facebook, we have an event page for that and also all the other events that we're, we do around the year. Right. So. It sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for all you do. Yeah, Chelsea. thank you so much for having me. Okay.